Just for <laughs> Kelly with Gia's Italian Kitchen. I am the owner of Gia's Italian Kitchen. Gia is my daughter, uh, named after my grandfather from the Tuscany region, Giovanni. Um, so thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We are going to make two awesome appetizers. Uh, the photo that's on the event was th for the vote. So thank you to those who voted. Uh, what we're going to make tonight is um, a brie appetizer with pesto, and then we're making homemade meatballs. My grandma's, nana's, no-no's, um, homemade meatballs, which... We have a little studio audience here tonight uh, helping me in the background, and they are stoked. Are you guys stoked for the, for, for the, for the meatballs especially, right? Yes. Yeah. Both. Yes. 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 So we are going to start with the brie because that's going to be a pretty easy appetizer to make, and then you can have a little uh, munch, and then we'll move to the meatballs. So what I want you to do first is turn your oven to 375. So I'm going to do that as well. And get that going. Okay, so um, you need, and in the, the packet, so uh, if you did email me, you should have received the packets. Uh, it has the grocery list. It has the recipes. It has an equipment list, such as, you know, do you need a food processor or, you know, your knives and cutting boards, that type of stuff. Um, if you did not email us and ask us for that packet, you can do that at any time, and we will send that out to you. It's Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at Gia's Italian Kitchen, G-I-A-S, Gia's Italian Kitchen dot biz. And then we can send you that packet. So let's get a small or to medium size uh, oven safe pan or bowl. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of olive oil and my brie wheel. So I'm going to flip this camera. So we've got this going live on Facebook and YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, um, oh cool, I can see that too. I've got the, I can see the chat now. Usually I can't see the chat. Great. Awesome. Okay. At least on Facebook I can see it. Um, I'm going to flip these cameras on YouTube. Um, so YouTube, I've got two cameras going. So if you guys are on your, on your laptops and you can flip or maybe you can flip on your phones, I'm gonna flip the cameras, um, so that'll be cool, because I'm gonna give this a try. And then you can see see my hands, but for the Facebook, I think you guys can all see all of this, because it's a wider lens. So what I'm gonna do is put a couple tablespoons of olive oil, just in the pan, bottom of the bowl, really just so your brie has a better chance of not completely sticking to the bottom. And then we're gonna unwrap the brie and put this in the pan. So there's different size, um, you know, different size wheels. You can do whatever size wheel you have based on how many people you have. Um, mine is a 16 ounce because I've got other people here. Um, I call them my pit crew because they're my helpers because I can't do this on my own. So thank you also for, for being here, guys. Um, so we, we feed the pit crew. So I've got a larger one here that you might not want that bigger one. So what I'm going to do next is just take like a dinner knife and make a few slats in this. It's going to help this start to melt, but then it's also, once we get to the next phase and we get the pesto in here, it's going to get the pesto more down into the crevices of the brie, so um, that's really probably the main reason so that we can get that pesto going. All right. So I'm going to just set this aside, and once the oven dings and comes up to temperature, we will put that, put that in there. So the other ingredients that you'll need for the brie, walnuts and cranberries. I use, um, a lot of cranberries have a lot of sugar. The dried ones have a lot of sugar in them. So I bought ones that are 50% less sugar just to um, alleviate some of that, but it's really, a, that's a preference. So whatever you guys bought is fine. And some walnuts. And then you're gonna need a cookie sheet. So we can get that. And what we're gonna do is toast the walnuts and um, the bread. So if you, 
bought the bread, or you could use, you could use crackers too if you don't want to use the bread. But I did a big long baguette. Now I bought this little skinny thing because since this is an appetizer, this will be a nice size um, for like a bite or two, so that you're not getting like a big piece of bruschetta. Um, you're getting more of an appetizer size. So if you take a serrated knife, actually let me get a bread knife. And I'm just gonna slice these. I'm gonna stick the heel aside. I like to do these kind of at an angle just to make them look a little more fancy. Now I'm doing these maybe a quarter of an inch wide. Um, so again, think, you know, bite size piece, whatever, you know, you want to bite into for an appetizer is kind of the thickness that you're looking for. And we're just going to lay these on the cookie sheet. Normally I would say put a piece of parchment down, but you really don't need parchment for this because all we're doing is toasting the walnuts and toasting the bread, which is not going to be very messy. So you really don't need, um, don't need to put anything down or oil or anything like that. So just watch your fingers here. So in the Facebook and the YouTube, we have folks on um, another laptop. So if some of you have already done a little bit in the chat, but if you have any questions as we're going through the class, you can type those into the chat and they will shout them out so that we can get your question answered real time. And if you would like, I would really love to hear where you guys are tuning in from. I recognize like only one name in the chat. <laughs> so if you're watching, awesome. Thank you so much for joining. Put in the chat, where are you tuning in from? I really would love to hear where you guys are coming from. And even better yet, how did you stumble on this? How did you hear about this? Was it just a Facebook post or something else? Um, I would love to hear about that. Okay, I'm gonna do maybe half of this loaf so that we can use the other half for the walnuts. Oh, that's kind of squished. And then we can always do a little bit more of this later if you run out of bread. Which you might, because your guests will probably fight over this appetizer. It's so delicious. Um, okay, where are the walnuts? I think I said, how much did I say? Maybe a, like a quarter cup. You could do a cup. You could do, if you love walnuts and you want more of the, the protein, you can put as much uh, or as little in um, as you want. One of your guests wants to know if they need to spray the pan. Good question. You do not need to spray the pan. All we're doing is toasting the bread, mm -hmm. and right now there's nothing on the bread, and then the walnuts, which are going in raw also, so you do not need to spray the pan or put down parchment or anything, because this really is not going to be messy. Um, if you want, you could put down parchment. I wouldn't spray it, though, because I we don't want spray to get on either of these, um, because that might change a little bit of the flavor of the dish, so I wouldn't spray it. But you really don't need to do anything. So I'm going to do maybe, well, I, I should just change the recipe. I, I love the walnuts. Are you guys cool if I do more walnuts? Yeah, okay. sure. Okay, I'm doing like three quarters of a cup. And what these are going to do, they're going to toast up a little bit. And then they're going to go on top of the, um, the appetizer. So if people love the walnuts, they can dig into it. If they don't, they can kind of shove them aside. No big deal. All right. So I'm gonna set this aside. What we're gonna do is brie first. So your prepared pan with the bread and the walnuts, just set that aside for right now. And we will get, get that in the oven in a little bit. So my oven is not quite at 375, so we'll give that a wait and we can start the meatballs. So grab two big bowls or a large and a medium. And what we're going to do is um, put the meat in one and then kind of everything else in the other. 
and then we'll mix them together. Okay, so we're gonna do All right, the other thing um, that we need is, I, I said in the instructions, kind of like a pie pan or, or like a wide, shallow um, pan. We're gonna get that for um, after we've assembled the meatballs and I'll, we'll keep you posted on that. Could you do me a favor? Could you go in the cabinet under the shrimp there? I think on the bottom left, there's a thing of flour. Yes. One of them sugar and one of them flour. Okay, so this little shallow, like a quiche pan or something, and then, thank you, yeah. we're going to put just like a quarter cup or so of just all-purpose flour, or if you need gluten-free flour, you know, almond flour, whatever you want to use. We're going to use very little of this, but I'm going to prepare this now before my hands get really messy. And then we'll get that out of the way. Thank you. Actually, keep that out just in case. I don't okay. think we're going to need more, but it's possible. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, okay, let's roll up the sleeves. <laughs> so we're going to start to get dirty with the meatballs. So we're going to do two eggs in the large bowl. So the larger bowl is where everything is going to end up. Oh, yeah. Let's flip to the camera. There we go. Okay, so the two eggs are going to go in the larger bowl. So we'll do that. And then we'll grab some milk and you can use whatever milk that you want. I don't know if I would use, hmm, if you couldn't do dairy, I'm trying to think, I'm just trying to think of alternatives. You know, I, I as we go through these classes, I love to give you options, you know, whether it's omit the meat or, you know, gluten-free flour or whatever. Um, but almond milk or almond milk? Well, see, I don't think the almond milk would, because you would taste that. Um. Um, but what about soy milk? Soy milk doesn't taste like almond milk. You can probably honestly use, there's not enough in there. That's true, there's not. You think you could do almond milk? I think okay. Use any. okay, so preference, yeah, whatever. Um, I'm just using regular, regular 2% or 1% milk. Yeah, we're only using, what is it, a quarter cup, I think? Yeah, okay. We'll get that in there and whisk it up. And you don't need like beaters. I'm just doing this by hand because um, it's, we don't need to meringue it or anything like that. This is really just to be kind of a binder uh, for, the, for the meatballs. And then we'll whisk those up. So we heard where's, it, it, has anyone posted where they're from? South Padre Island. Oh, whoa, that's awesome. Hey, Saint South Padre. Uh, is that what it says? That? It's South Padre. Oh my gosh, that's super cool. Oh, yes. yeah, and, and uh, Oregon. Or, yeah. Okay, Oregon. Portland. 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 Okay. Um, let me see on Facebook. We have people from Independence, Chicago, and also Cedar Rapids. Okay. So it was at your Marion class. Nice. Oh, good. Thank Marianne you for joining. We loved it. And the independence person hopefully has been to one of those classes. Hello to the independence folks from the Brick Kitchen. Dyersville. Okay. Oh, wow. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining. And Gra oh, you're Graziano's Town. Graziano's Town. That'd be Des Moines. <laughs> That'd be Nana. Hi, Mama. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, next we're gonna do our meats. So I put um, our, these meatballs are just so delicious. We do um, ground sausage, Italian sausage, of course. Um, veal, which is just a, a more tender beef. So if you couldn't find the veal, you could just use more ground beef and then ground beef. So I'm gonna grab those meats. And I just heard my oven ding, so I'm gonna get the brie. Let's see. Let's flip to there. So we've got the brie in the little bowl. We're gonna put that in the oven 
at the 375. And what we're doing by putting that in by itself right now is just to like let it start melting because once we put the pesto in there, we don't want the pesto to cook and we're just kind of warming it up. Um, so that's why we're doing that all by itself right now. Um, which actually speaking, if you did get your uh, packets, if you emailed us for the packet, what I put in the blue font is my recipe for the lemon basil pesto. So what makes that a super awesome pesto is um, we add lemon juice, fresh squeezed lemon juice, and fresh ground black pepper. And so that's kind of the difference. And then we toast uh, the pine nuts. So that makes it a little bit of a different pesto. If you um, just purchased it from the store, that's totally fine. What I have is my pesto that I've already made um, that we're going to use this lemon basil pesto, but we're not making that tonight just due to um, time. I didn't want to overwhelm you guys, but if you go to my YouTube channel, Gia's Italian Kitchen, there's over a hundred videos on there. I Pretty sure there's a pesto in there somewhere, and if there's not, you can email um, or go to my website. Those recipes are on there, Kelly at cheeseitalianKitchen.biz, B-I-Z, and get those recipes. Or you know, shoot us a note if you would like to um, have a personal class, and we can make the pesto together. So um, tonight, I put the recipe in there, but we're not going to make it. So um, let's get back to the meat. So. Let's make sure you have everything out, first of all, before you get your hands all dirty. So we've got sausage, veal, ground beef. We've got our little bowl with um, the flour. Do you have to be exact with the flour? Or is it just... No, no, good question. The flour is going to be for a dusting. It's not actually an ingredient. So the flour that's in here is... Yeah, totally. I just, I started with, I think, a quarter cup. It totally doesn't matter because we can add more if we need it. I don't know if we're going to need more, but it's, you need very little, but no, it does not matter. Um, okay, we've got two eggs and, did I put milk in here? Yes. <laughs> and I whisked it. Okay, now I'm remembering. <laughs> um, okay, we've got parsley, fresh parsley. This is super key that it's fresh. Um, you'll taste it if you if you use the fresh versus not. Um, garlic. Um, here, oh, let me show you this little garlic tip. I don't mind on this. Okay. So, what I would recommend not using is a jar from the store, any store, that is prepackaged, not in the fridge, the garlic, like, don't do it. Please don't do it. There's citric acid. There's like other stuff in there. It is not just garlic and it it really like it's oxid oxidizes. It just it doesn't taste blah blah. blah. It doesn't taste good. What I <laughs> what I have here, this is my little garlic hat. Um, so in your your stores, whether it's your local grocery store or your big box, your Sam's Costco, there's bags of pre-shucked garlic. This is gold. Get those and then I put them in, oh, let's see if this will reach. Thank you. In my little Cuisinart, my little food processor, which you can now get at the Brick Kitchen, by the way, um, that you put the pre shucked garlic in here, mince them all up, put them in little freezer safe jars, fill it with olive oil just to cover it and give it a little stir. This will keep in the freezer for months. And the olive oil helps to preserve the garlic. And then you have fresh garlic. And that mess of the crushing of the garlic, whether you're making meatballs or you're making a stir fry, this part's done. So that's my hack. So that's what I'm using. If you do not have that, if you've not watched any of my shows before, you need to mince your garlic. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to just take a nice heaping tablespoon. So I've got six garlic cloves. Actually, I'm gonna use a big one which is about, once it's minced, you know, a heaping big tablespoon, don't be shy on the garlic. You can certainly go over <laughs> with that. Um, although I remember we made pesto years and years ago, and I think you were like, there's too much garlic. <laughs> Do you yes, remember that? Yes. <laughs> you put a ton of it. <laughs> I know, right? Like, it's bring it on. It's garlic pesto. Bring it on. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, okay. 
So we'll give that a little mix. And then, so how many cloves of garlic would you say is the equivalent that's in there? What do you have? I would say about six to eight. Okay, yeah. So if, yeah, if you're crushing them at home, mincing them at home, um, about six to eight. So what you're gonna try to do if you have whole cloves is take your big knife, get, you know, you could get the end off of it to get part of that um, shuck off and then just go, you know, put it on your cutting board and just smack your knife. That'll help break it apart to get that skin off and then you'll just have the clove and then you can just kind of chop it up. If you have the uh, little food processor, you could throw it in there now and um, just mix it up. Okay, so next, I'm just gonna chop my parsley since I have it here. Can we take your camera? Yeah, let's go back to, thank you, we'll go back to, we're flipping back and forth on the camera so they can see the, the down version of the, the uh, parsley. Okay, so actually, this is fun. I, let me show this. So if you were um, my, my mom <laughs> and you were doing this, which I'm sure she's doing this right now because she's watching. I don't know if you're making these, but so the parsley, she takes these with a pair of scissors and goes, one <laughs> with it. Whoa, <laughs> little thing at a time. I do not have the patience for that. So, and if, you know what, the whole thing is a plant. So if there's a few stems in here, like it really doesn't matter. Um, but if you want to be like super authentic, like, um, like my, my Nana, you can do this <laughs> and get just the leaves no stems and do that like for your whole bunch of parsley so if you want to do that go for it i'm not so i'm going to come back here and we're going to just chop these up now i will try to take some of the stems off but like it's like i said it's just a plant it doesn't it's not going to hurt anything so i think what i what we have in the recipe is a few tablespoons of the parsley um yeah be be generous with this because they're fresh. It's going to add a really nice flavor. So watch your fingers. I'm just going to give this a rough chop, moving my fingers back. Then I'm going to turn the parsley and do it again. So hey, since we have uh, folks in Iowa and in Independence watching, I'm going to give a little plug. Um, at the Brick Kitchen, uh, which is in Independence, Iowa. It's a beautiful little kitchen store, and I do cooking classes up there every month, but they, the reason I mention it, they have knife safety classes up there. So <laughs> that's, that is, that was, that's a fabulous class to uh, put on your Christmas list um, to, to get into 2024, because um, it's, it's a wonderful class. It's super fun. Okay, back to the parsley. So let's get this chopped up. You want to get this pretty fine because again think of where it's going it's going inside of a meatball we don't want big chunks because we don't want our meatballs to fall apart we want all our ingredients to be really finely chopped so that it gets incorporated and doesn't break apart okay so let's get the parsley in there so basically i'm just doing two bowls the meat everything else because what I want is for the meat to get mixed up the the three different meats that we have but I also want everything else to get super mixed up before we add it to the meat so that it's not um, you know chunks and there's like parsley over here and no parsley over here so that's why I'm doing that so if you think of like when you're you know if you make you're making your holiday cookies you do your dry and your wet right that's all we're doing okay let me wipe this off Okay, and I think our timer for the brie, there we go, okay. Okay, so your brie, you should have had your timer on like 10, 12 minutes, so I think that is done. So let's take that out and let that sit for just a minute. Is the brie kitchen next to Scooters, or across the street from Scooters in Independence? Yes, yes it is. It's uh, inside of, oh my gosh, look at this. Ooh, you can see that melting. Oh, that looks delicious. Can you see that? Let's see, let me, oh yeah, there, flip over. Yum. 
little bubbling already. So just set that aside for now. Keep your oven on. And um, before we jump back, we're kind of multitasking. Before we jump back, that uh, cookie sheet that we have with the walnuts and the bread. Um, we Actually, we could just put that in now. Let's put that in now. And just do like five minutes, five, six minutes on your timer. At the 375. Okay. Um, yeah, so the brick kitchen, it's in the old, um, the old opera house in downtown Independence. It is the coolest building. The floor that's in there is actually still the stage floor. Oh, cool. In part of it, obviously, not the whole thing. But um, Nate and Shelley White, they are, they've renovated this whole space, and it's this beautiful kitchen store. Not appliances, but like things. And the coolest thing they have here, I've got it back here. Um, I don't mean for this to be a commercial for, <laughs> for the brick kitchen, but um, I, sometimes you can't help yourself. They have olive oil and balsamic vinegar tastings. So they've got a whole wall in the back of their kitchen, um, and it's Olivelle. It's this um, joint out of, I think it's maybe Wyoming or one of the Dakotas uh, or Montana, somewhere out there, um, where they, they get these, and it's delicious, and it's real. It's real extra virgin olive oil, so it's delicious stuff. But they have all all these other you know pans and things, but then they have this beautiful kitchen. Huge kitchen um, where we do cooking classes, so it's awesome. So if you haven't been there, um, there's a brewery, there's restaurants, there's little shops. It's a lovely destination uh, to go shopping and have an afternoon with your family. Anyway, um, Independence, Iowa. Independence, Iowa. I know. Who knew? <laughs> there's cute holiday <laughs> shops. There's there is. There's really cute little boutique shops, um, scooters. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of little things on this main drag of downtown Independence. So if you haven't gone, check it out. It's If you're in Cedar Rapids, it's literally like a half hour. So it's a nice, it's an easy drive. Um, okay, where are we? We have eggs, parsley, let's see, uh, milk. Onion. Let's do some salt and pepper. Oh, yeah, and then we got to do our onion. And some cheese. So if you if you have a grinder, fresh ground salt and pepper, of course, is always best. So I'm just gonna do a couple a couple grinds. You don't need more than like a half teaspoon at the most of the salt because we're putting in uh, the Italian sausage. We're putting in the the pecorino romano cheese, which is salty so you don't need too much in there some fresh ground black pepper isn't this cool i just pulled it upside that is down cool. that is cool and it has a flashlight that's nice <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually see how much it's in there <laughs> all right so how much salt and, and pepper do you think that is equal to at the most a half a teaspoon okay yeah not not too much Okay, then let's cut up our onion. So my onion is kind of big. Let's go back to here. It's kind of big, so I'm gonna do a half of an onion and we're gonna mince it up really small. So if you have a that food processor, we can give that a try or you can just do it by hand. And I do not cut my onion I've, sh I've had some videos online of, a, of other people cutting onions just because I think it's funny to see how other, <laughs> other people cut onions. I do not do it like the Food Network because um, I really don't think it's saving any time. I just cut it up, cut it in half, and take my skins off. But if you want to do it, I think there's someone out there that likes to do it that way. Go for it. You do you. I'm doing me. And I just, I cut them into really thin little slices. Watch your fingers. Oop. Oh, I lost a sliver there. And then if you turn it and just cut it, I mean, that's like more mince than then doing that like fly away, whatever you want to call it. So do it however you want. In the end, you want little minced pieces. Again, thinking about where this is going, 
you want them to be small and incorporated into our mixture. And get the little piece of skin off. And at the end, I'm just going to turn it a little bit. And then we can put this right in. Oh! Hot onion. <laughs> Hot onion. Put this right in with your egg mixture. Oh, my eyes are tearing. Oh, great. Woo! Okay, and then we'll get rid of this because I think, I think we're done chopping. So I'm gonna just put this aside and wash the onion off my hand. So to stop the, uh, the crying from the onion, if you wash your hands, that's the best thing, right? Because you're getting the oils off of it. Um, but if you, if you can't, don't have access to washing your hands immediately, someone said like chew gum. Have you ever heard that? Is that a thing? I don't know. Maybe that's a teenage thing. Or put a wooden spoon in your mouth. Put a wooden spoon. I have a wooden match. Okay. What? Put a wooden spoon. Really? Yeah. Really? Just like putting a wooden spoon I'm like on your tongue? Yeah. You're holding on. Yeah, just biting down on it while you're cutting. Maybe to get the. Well, no, but the oil's not in your mouth. Okay, that's bizarro. Okay. Or swim goggles. Or swim goggles. There you go. <laughs> yes. Okay, so my timer is going off. We've got up here. Yeah, thank you. Our toast and our walnuts. Mm, look at that. You see that? Here. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so these are pretty much done. We're gonna just set these aside for now. And come back to our brie, which we set back. And we're gonna finish this off, just warm it up in the oven, and then your appetizer will be ready to eat. So we've got the pesto. We're gonna put a couple heaping tablespoons of pesto and just spread it around. Oh, this is gonna be delish. How much did I say? Yeah, I said a small jar, so like a six ounce jar, I think would be kind of um, what you might find is like the small jar in the store. What I'm doing is maybe, yeah, that's probably about six ounces, maybe like three, four table, big tablespoons of the pesto. And then, uh, we're going to get the cranberries and the walnuts and get those ready because those will go on afterwards. So we'll put this back in the oven just for a few minutes. So let's put the timer at maybe five, six, another six minutes or so. I think I put seven or eight on the recipe. All right, so we'll let that finish and then we can taste those. So let's get back to our meatballs. So we've got, just got our onions in there. You want to change the camera? Yeah. Am I down, I'm down there, yeah. So I'm mixing up my onions. Okay, so let's check. We've got garlic, onions, eggs, milk, Parsley, salt, pepper. Okay, we need breadcrumbs and cheese. So, cheese, breadcrumbs. You can use, uh, again, whatever breadcrumbs that you like. I use, I love these pankos because they're really light and kind of crispy. Um, I don't use Italian, you know, you, you can probably find breadcrumbs in the store that say, um, you know, Italian seasoning breadcrumbs, like, ugh. Because <laughs> I don't know what's in there. I don't know what seasonings are in there. I don't buy those. I buy just plain, nothing's in them because I'm seasoning my dish. That's my own preference, but whatever you want to use is totally fine. I'm going to put these in last because actually what I want to do in a minute is get our pan going before we get these. Oh, get ourselves all messy. Okay, what you can put in though is the cheese. I just don't want these to get too soggy. 
the cheese we're doing half a cup, I think, half a cup. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so I use Pecorino Romano. What is that? What's the difference? Pecorino Romano is, it's a region. Romano, the region of Rome. So Pecorino is a cheese from a sheep versus a Parmigiana Reggiana, which is from a cow. Um, they're both delicious if they're authentic. Uh, there's, if you think of your local grocers, there's probably 35 different types of Parmesans. Yeah. Some of them are super not great, right? Um, if you find a really good Pecorino Romano, it's always going to be great. If it says Pecorino Romano. Um, the Pecorino is the type of cheese. The Romano is the region. So if you look at some of those, and the reason I say that, if you look at some of the labels um, that like they look all Italian, the labels, and the cheese just says Pecorino, it's fake because Pecorino isn't, or no, it says Romano. Sorry, it says Romano. Romano's not the cheese. Mm -hmm. It's the region. And if you turn and look at the label, mm -hmm. it says it's from a cow. Mm -hmm. Like it's super, it's not even the real stuff. Wow. Does it matter in the end? No. Is it going to be delicious cheese? Probably. It'll probably be fine. I'm just being like snotty about the cheese because Pecorino. my grandma always used my mom, Pecorino Romano, whether it's in... Um, you know, a minestrone soup, whether it's in homemade mac and cheese, whether it's going in a meatball, that's what we use. We use Pecorino Romano. It's a little bit saltier than a Parmesan Reggiana. Um, so I just, I like it better. And it's, um, yeah, so whatever you got there. And then we'll mix that up. So this is starting to get a little thicker. Which is totally fine. Actually, I'm going to switch to a spoon and ditch this whisk. And just get that incorporated. Okay, so last here, breadcrumbs. So we're going to set that aside for just a minute. Next, let's get our pan prepared. So I have a very large saucepan with sides. Um, you can use a frying pan. I would just recommend using something that is rather large so that your meatballs have room to spread out. But more importantly, it will help reduce the amount of splattering of oil and, and things and making a mess. So I'm going to just put this over here and turn this on a medium heat to get it going. Now you don't want this on high because I'm going to use olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Um, you can use whatever you want, but that's the best extra virgin olive oil, which you don't want at a high heat. So medium heat, not high heat, and we'll be cooking the meatballs in there. Um, this is just how, I, I, this is a fabulous way to do it um, on the stovetop. Um, of course, you could make your meatballs and throw them in the oven. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do it, um, but this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to get... About a, I think I said about a half a cup um, of the olive oil and put that in the pan. So you want to just at least make sure that the whole pan is covered with olive oil, but you don't want like, you know, a pool because we're not frying them. We're just sauteing them kind of and cooking them. Um, Okay, let's check. The brie is almost coming out, so I'm going to wait again before I get my hands dirty. So um, let's talk about wine. <laughs> um, I, if we were doing a true, true uh, wine pairing, I think I put two in your uh, packet since we're doing uh, the brie. I would pair that with like a Pinot Grigio or a Vermentino, which is a, a really nice crisp white. Um, and then for the meatballs, like a Chianti Reserve or a Cabernet uh, for the meatball pairing. So... Salud. And there's our brie. Okay, so let's get that out and then we'll turn this off. Thank you. And this is totally amazingly melted. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. Okay, I'm going to switch this back. Here we go. Here's our brie. 
You guys see that? It's ooey gooey, melty, amazing. So the last two ingredients, the cranberries and the walnuts. And these are just a topping to add some depth and some delicious flavor. So no magic, just throw them on there. Can you grab me one of those little um, appetizer plates, please? Mm -hmm. And then, thank you. The cranberries. This is also very beautiful because you've got the red and the green with the white. I love it. And it's gonna taste amazing. So I'm gonna get a little spoon and my baguette and we'll plate this so that you guys can eat this and then we'll finish our meatballs. You guys see this? There we go, okay. So you can scoop it or I'm gonna just do a spoon here. Oh my gosh, look at that gooiness. It's so good. Man. Now it's really hot, so I'm gonna plate it, but uh, I'll take a bite of this in a few. I'm not gonna take a bite just yet because the brie is like, Bubbling. Oh my gosh. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Amazing. Okay, so we'll, oh, let me get a cranberry on that one. And a cranberry on that one. Yum. Okay, so here is, let me go back to here. Your cranberry with brie appetizer with the pesto. And hopefully you will try that lemon basil pesto. It is phenomenal um, it, The in the blue font. Actually, you know, I'm gonna put it right here. Can you guys see this? My little Santa dude, isn't he cute? <laughs> I know, isn't that weird? Can you see that? Oh, you can't see it in the YouTube. Here, let me move it in. Look at my dude. Wait, hang on, let me move this. Okay, here, I'll move this one. There, now you can see him, kind of. Kind of, maybe. Anyway, he's a cute little Santa dude. He's going to be my little plate holder. You can see him. There you go. Pit crew, you guys can eat that. Sweet. And I'm going to set this aside, and I'm going to take one in a little bit. Okay. Meatballs. Let's do it. Okay. Little stir breadcrumbs, about another half a cup. So I'm gonna add those now. I've got a third of a cup, so I'm just kind of going overflow here on the measurement. Mix it up. How's the app? Mm. Oh, there's, mm. there's groaning. Mm. <laughs> I'm serious. Mm. So if your brie is done and you've added uh, all of your ingredients, take a bite, put in the chat, let me know. I love the what you think. There. Isn't it good? Yes. Yeah. And just that little bit of the, you know, like five, six, seven minutes of toasting them mm -hmm. is, it really does bring mm -hmm. out that nuttiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No way. Which if you're gonna make the pesto, that is also key in, um, the pesto roasting the pine nuts mm, mm -hmm. because when you roast the pine nuts that brings out that nutty flavor and you can really mm -hmm. even with all the other ingredients going on in that pesto you can really taste them um, okay meats one pound italian sausage mm. and i'll give a plug for my favorite store on the planet graziano's it's uh in a, in iowa in des moines iowa and it's been around for over a hundred years. It is this little tiny Italian grocery store that you just want to live there. <laughs> and they've got the sausage and the, oh, there's more. The sausage and the olives and the cheese. Um, it's just phenomenal. Okay, then. And you can get it at hy now. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, if you're in the mid, does I or does Hy-Vee go out of Iowa? Is there just Iowa or is it's it Midwest? In Nebraska too. Okay, yeah, there's some in Illinois. Really? Okay, so Hy-Vee grocery store, yes, Graziano sausage is there. If you do not make it to Des Moines, um, 
Can then, people order that online? Can they get Graziano's? Do they do I don't online think sales? They, no, mm-hmm. I don't think so. I could be wrong, but I mm-hmm. don't think so. Mm-hmm. It's a really small shop. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a high now. But the, right. the sausage is a high now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And, and the cheese, which now my hands are all dirty, but you saw the Pecorino Romano. Um, I buy that from Graziano's. Um, in a five pound bucket mm. <laughs> because it's grated, finely grated. It is the best. It's the best pecker, pecker in Romano. So, uh, cause I put that, I put that in everything. Um, so anyway, okay. Now we're getting dirty. The la- the third meat, the veal. So a half a pound of veal. Again, if you couldn't find that, you can just add, um, additional sausage or, uh, ground beef. I know this is gross. If you want to use If you want to use um, a spoon, you can, but like the authentic way to do this, my grandma is rolling over in her grave. Do not use a spoon. Uh, You got to use your hands. (laughs) So uh, I'm just, I'm actually kind of kneading it like a dough, which you don't have to do, but it helps, I think, to get just everything mixed up because you're kind of turning and folding and mixing to get all those meats mixed in with each other. Not for any reason of, of kneading just kind of a way to get it mixed in. Oh, you gotta use a little bit of muscle. <laughs> if you've seen any little Italian lady cooking, right? There's a little bit of muscle involved. Not too much, this is easy. Try making pasta or pizza dough. Or what did we make? Focaccia. Oh my gosh, we made focaccia a few weeks ago. That was amazing. Okay, this looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna put it, transfer this whole amount into my bowl of the rest of the stuff. Get rid of this bowl. And again, we're getting dirty. More dirty. Okay, actually, I'm gonna turn down, turning down my oven to low, because I don't wanna burn my olive oil. And then, Let's keep mixing. So again, I'm just kind of turning, kneading. And maybe like kind of squishing. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it it feels good. I think it feels good to have it in, your, <laughs> in between your fingers. <laughs> you gotta just get in there. Take your rings it, off. Oh yeah, if you've got, yeah, I took all my rings off. Yes, for sure. Do that. Take the jewelry off. Take the fake nails off. I don't have fake nails, these are mine. (laughs) Get it, oh, squished. Oh yeah, I know. But you want every bite to have a little bit of everything so it's not missing any of those flavors. Okay, I think I'm good. So what I'm gonna do is make a few little balls and then we'll cook them and get you guys on your way. So you can make, now actually these are the same meatballs that I use um, in my Italian wedding soup for example. So um, you know what, I don't even have, can't even, gross, I don't want to touch my phone. Can you switch Mm -hmm. right there? Perfect. Okay. So this is the same recipe that I use. I mean, no nose meatballs or no nose meatballs. But if you want like a dinner size portion, this is what I'm gonna do. If you want an appetizer size portion, just cut it in half and make a smaller bowl ball. So we'll do that for tonight since we're doing appetizers. And then I'm gonna just set it back in the bowl and make about five of these so that we can get them cooking. How many inches do you think that is? Like two inches? It's like a, appetizer. like a little bigger, like a tennis ball. The size of a tennis ball. So maybe a couple inches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tennis, balls, the oh, tennis ball is the appetizer size. No, that's the dinner size. Um, that's like that's, a golf ball. That's a golf ball. The, okay, yeah. That's so like tennis ball. ball, dinner, golf ball, <laughs> appetizer. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I'm making golf ball appetizer size. Um, the other fun fact that I put in the recipe is that... Um, over in Italy, they, you know, they don't eat these in on a big plate of pasta. That's a, a super American thing. And I put that in the picture just because, I mean, we do it too, because my kids, that's my kids like it. But over there, for an appetizer, they would do meatball, one meatball, 
in a little plate um, with sauce, with oh. marinara sauce. Oh. That's your that's your app. Oh. Or as a meal, or as an app, I suppose. Um, oh, served over a beautiful light arugula salad with Ooh, a lemon vinaigrette. Ooh, yum. So that's how normally how meatballs are served. They're not served in a big plate of mm, pasta. That seems great. Um, but you can, you know, whatever you like, uh, whatever your family wants, you can serve it how that how that is. Um, okay, I'm gonna wash. Give me a second. Okay, the other thing you're gonna need is just a little, like a cereal bowl with some water in it. And I'll show you why. Just like a half a cup, nothing officially measured. Um, and then I'm gonna get a plate for when these come out and I'm gonna put uh, just a couple paper towels down on there to catch some of the grease when we're done. Okay, so this is really a sure-fired way to have an absolutely delicious meatball. So pick, well, I just washed my hands, but oh well. <laughs> Getting dirty again. We're gonna take just a little bit of water and lightly put the water on the outside of the meatball and then kind of play catch with it to get the excess off. Then we're gonna put it in the flour. So we're gonna cover it with flour, however, I'm gonna play catch with it again and get as much excess flour off as I can so that really you can still see the color of the meatball. It's not coated with flour. This is really just to help it stay together when we get it into the pan, not to get a coating on it. You shouldn't even hardly taste this. Okay, going in. And I'm gonna turn this back up to a medium heat and then go back, little tiny bit of water, cover, thank you, cover with flour. Could you do this on the pictures? Yeah. And then again, play catch with these meatballs and get that excess flour off. And then put them right down in your pan. You should be hearing a little bit of a crackle um, of your olive oil in the pan. So make sure that flour is all the way around because what we're going to do is turn these meatballs to get them fully cooked. Um, so you want to make sure that you've played catch with those and the water and the flour all the way around. And then after we do this, we can wash our hands and then our hands will be free for a little while until you make the next batch. So once those go in, if you want, you can put like a splash guard on, you know, if you have a little screen thing, like for when you make bacon, you can put that on there, but um, we are gonna be moving these around every couple minutes so that we get all of the sides cooked. So the screen won't, won't really be on there very long. Okay, one more. You can hear that crackling because we had the water in there, right? Okay. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to wash up again. Get this stuff off my hands. Probably a little bit sticky. You might need to wash a couple times. When the flour gets wet, it gets a little, a little goopy, right? All right. Done with that. So next, you're gonna want a um, either tongs 
or maybe even a slotted spoon. What you want is something that is not going to puncture your meatballs. So if you have a tongs that have a, a little silicone at the end, excuse me, that's great because it's not, hopefully this is going to help us so that we don't stab our meatballs. So I'm just going to come over here. Can you guys all see me still? Yeah, okay. And I'm going to stand here, and we're going to turn these every couple minutes. So that needs maybe just another 30 seconds to just put them in. So I'm going to just taste my wine. <laughs> so I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is so much fun. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, if you have enjoyed this, um, the other thing that you can do is a private group class. So my private group classes, you can check out uh, more information on my website. It's giasitaliankitchen.biz, G-I-A-S, dot biz, B-I-Z. And the private group class, we can do virtually, we can do uh, in person, or we can do a combination. You select a menu, and I can either come to your house, or we can uh, offer a venue if you don't have one, uh, or we can do them virtually, and we create this beautiful dinner party. So if you think about, you know, if your mom is in California, and your sister's in Florida, and you're wherever, in Chicago, and you don't get to see each other that often, we can zoom you all in and create this beautiful dinner party with, you know, your video, and your your talking, and your chatting, and the grandkids are coming in the background, uh, and you're all cooking. And and I'm helping to facilitate uh, the cooking aspect of it by bringing you guys together through food. Um, so that's really, really a fun option. Uh, tonight, I'm offering a 10% discount uh, for really for anything on my website. So on my website, I have my first uh, virtual cookbook. So if you haven't checked that out, it's 21 easy recipes that I actually made uh, with the intention of getting your first apartment or going off to school. And they're, they're really easy recipes that um, my son could make. That, that's kind of how we started it last summer. Um, or the, the private group class. If you are in person, um, again, we can uh, do that at your house or, or somewhere local, but the, the virtual option is awesome. Um, I've done a girls' night where there were six girls, uh, that actually from high school, and they don't get to see each other. And so they all, we all did this Zoom. Everyone's in different states, and we did a beautiful dinner party. Um, so lots of different ways to use those private group classes. Um, let's give these a turn. So my first turn, I'm literally just turning them over. The second turn, you're going to try to get them on their sides. And if you need to, you can push down just a tiny bit so they don't tip over. But you want to make sure you get each side cooking at some point. Um, oh, you know what? Can, I, can you grab me another plate? Yeah. Let's taste. Let's taste our appetizer. Thank you. Let's bring this back in. And make some of these brie appetizers. Do you guys want more? You want another one? Yep. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Twist my arm. Twist my arm. Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, so the other the other service that I offer um, that you know we're coming up on the new year so this is a great uh, thing to start thinking about now uh, is employer team building so if your company has a culture program uh, or if you you know are just starting out and and haven't really thought about that something for your employees. To show your appreciation of them is going to go a very, very long way. Um, here, I'll give you guys those. Can you, sorry, <laughs> give me one more play. Thank you. Let's turn, let's turn these again. Oh, oh. Yeah, that appetizer, it's like ridiculous, isn't it? Turn, turn, turn on these meatballs. 
So employer team building. So again, we can do these virtually, or if you're in town, we can do these uh, at a venue uh, in town. I have um, access to a space of 35 people, up to 70, with a full kitchen. It's a beautiful event space to have um, a team building event. Um, those are so important for, for your companies. And as we're going into the new year, you know, and you're thinking about what to do for your employees for team building events, please keep me in mind. Um, again, G is Italian Kitchen biz backslash shop s-h-o-p and there's more information on uh, both of those the private group class and the employer team building you can have that 10 percent off for for any of those the cookbook the team building the private group class the promo code is the word holiday that's it just the word holiday put that in there 10 percent off your cart um, and you'll have all of next year to get scheduled. And uh, as soon as you book that, I'll send you my full menu, and you can we'll pick a beautiful menu, whatever you guys um, want to want to pick. So it's fun with the, the team building. Uh, it's really nice to do a couple appetizers. Maybe we could do a couple cocktails or mocktails. That way. Everyone gets a little involved, right? And everyone gets to, to help. They're, they're all interactive like this, where you and I are doing these things together. It's not a food demo. And uh, your employees or you and your friends, your, you know, your, your girlfriends, your siblings, um, everyone's involved. And, you know, when you, when you cook together, when you eat together, especially... Um, when you haven't seen each other for a while, relationships are strengthened. And you will be amazed at the memories, the memories and the bonds that you create um, when you when you cook and eat together. So um, please, please keep me in mind. And at a bare minimum, go on to my YouTube and Facebook and all those fun things and socials. And do the likes and the comments and the shares and the follows and all the social media things. Okay, I'm going to taste this. It's so good. <laughs> so good. It's so good. <laughs> I hope you guys are loving this appetizer. Mm, it's so good. Okay. Actually, you want to put that over there? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's get, I think it's probably just one more turn of these little guys. Can you give me, it's like my fifth time asking. Can I get one more plate? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to just put these on a paper towel to drain and just kind of roll it around just for a little bit to get a little of the excess oil off. And then I'm going to turn my heat down because we're going to pull this together so you guys can get out of here. Okay, so I've got them on the paper towel. I'm just gently rolling them around just to get, get some of that oil off. And then we're going to place these. And we've got our Italian meatballs. I'll say from Tuscany because that's where we're from. A little bit north of Florence. And you've got your brie appetizer. Those are your holiday appetizers for tonight. Thank you so much for joining. Again, if you enjoyed this, please go to my YouTube. Watch those. Subscribe, like, share, follow. Um, follow my Facebook. We're on all of them. I'm even on TikTok, which is crazy, but I'm on TikTok. <laughs> I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. Um, I've done all the socials I'm supposed to do. It's all Gia's. It's all called Gia's Italian Kitchen. G-I-A apostrophe S. Gia's Italian Kitchen. Um, and dot biz. Yeah. Or dot whatever for, for the socials. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and we're going to keep growing. We're going to keep doing these cooking classes and, uh, you know, the private group classes, employer team building, cooking at the group kitchen. Love, love, love. Thank you for all the support and happy holidays. Thank you so much for joining. Anything else? What did I miss? 
Okay. Enjoy your, your appetizers. Email if you have any questions. Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at GSItalianKitchen.biz. Happy holidays, folks. Thanks for joining.